Welcome to the Bread of Light broadcast. We pray that today's teaching blesses you, encourages you, inspires you, and motivates you to truly live a life worthy of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that we serve. Be blessed by today's teaching. God bless. About those two words, thankful and gratefulness. So my first question is going to be, can you be thankful and not grateful? And this is a, this is a question to the class. Can you be thankful and not grateful? Anybody? I think I think you can. I I was um in a situation where I think I was thankful, but I wasn't really in my heart of heart. I wasn't really grateful. Mm hmm. Okay. So you there is so you're saying there is a difference between being thankful and grateful. Anyone else? Yeah. I'm sorry, Tavina. Go ahead. Yeah, I was like, God, I thank you for it, but I really didn't appreciate it. Mm. If that if that was a different, if that means that's what that means to me. Yep, you're right. You're right. So when I was looking up the definition of thankfulness and grateful gratitude thankfulness is being being feeling being pleased or relieved where grateful is feeling or showing appreciation for someone or something you received and when i think about this i think about um like our kids but we give our kids like for christmas we give our kids a, a gift for Christmas, or you give someone a gift and they say thank you. It's just automatic. It's just part of them. But then what are they doing with the gift? Most of the time, my kids' gifts are either in the corner somewhere, they haven't unwrapped it, or it's broken, or they don't know where it's at. They have not taken care of the gift. So the action, there's action behind gratefulness outside of thankful could just be words. Thankfulness is mentioned 139 times in the Bible. Gratitude is mentioned 157 times in the Bible. Now, although there's nothing in the Bible saying one is better than the other, but I would assume gratefulness is much better because you show it and it's more of an action word that is more important than just the words themselves. Now, not saying that thankful, being thankful is not important because it's just as important it's important to hear the words thank you because when somebody does give you something and they don't say thank you, um, it can be considered rude. And if you go back to the person, they may say, well, you know my heart, but no, I don't know your heart. I need to hear you say thankful because thankful not only shows them appreciation and feeling pleased, but it shows that you've acknowledged the fact that I've given you something. And that you could be most likely pleased with the gift. So, however, grateful, on the other hand, requires more than just words, it's action. When we're thankful to God, it's more than just saying thank you, thank you, but it requires us showing God our gratefulness. So I think about the gifts, but more on natural and the spiritual gifts that God blesses us with. I, I thought about um, like my kids, I have two sons that have older cars and they both want newer cars. And one of my sons I was talking to, and he said, I know God's going to bless me with a, with another car, with a newer car. I said, so but what are you doing with the car that you have? How are you taking care of the car that you have? So the car ain't clean. You ain't taking care of it. You ain't paying attention to the lights that's on. You, you, you don't, um, put any any type of work into the car to make sure it's maintained. Why would God bless you with something better if you're not taking care of the thing that you have? So he's thankful that he has the car that he can get around to where he needs to go. But is he really grateful by showing appreciation for the thing that God has blessed him with already? There's that scripture that says, if you be faithful over a few then he'll make you ruler over many. And then I start thinking about the spiritual gifts. 
So there's things that, you know, there's the Bible talks about the different gifts and there's just things, talents that God has given us. Like some of us have gifts uh, or talents. And when it comes to singing or writing or speaking, you know, the Bible talks about administrators and teachers and evangelists and healing and knowledge. We thank God that we have them, but what are we doing with the gifts to show God that we appreciate it? What time are we putting into that gift that God has given us? How are we using that gift for the up, upbuilding of his kingdom to show God that we really, really appreciate the gift and is grateful for the gift that he's given us? So we, we've we decided, we've, we've come to the conclusion that thankfulness can just be words, but grateful is showing, it's an action word, showing appreciation. So as I was reading through the scripture, I found this passage of scripture that I wanted to kind of go over and talk about. It, it talks about how people, how us, how we can sometimes forget things that God has done and how we sometimes do not show, added, show gratitude. So I do have a bunch of scriptures, but we're going to be coming out of Deuteronomy eight and starting from the seventh verse. So basically what this scripture we're, we're coming out of was, was Moses was leading the nation of Egypt, nation out of Egypt for 40 years through the wilderness. And they had just defeated several enemies and they were getting ready to enter the land God promised them. So Moses, Moses rallies the people together to remind them of God's law and why they should obey it. But he also wanted to warn them that they did not forget God after they had come into wealth and prosperity of Canaan. So although this is back in the day, this is definitely relevant right now because God has blessed us so many ways, blessed us to the point that we don't appreciate the things or take advantage of the things that God has given us. And especially now with how God is blessing LWM and how he's going to bless all the members that are a part and anyone that's associated with it. I'm speaking that in existence right now, that we want to still be mindful that we give praise and honor and thanks and gratefulness to the, to what, who, and what should be or what should be being grateful for. So I'm going to read this particular scripture, this slide, and then I'm going to ask someone else to read the following. So let me start off. So it says, for the Lord, okay, my thing is kind of cut off here. For the Lord, your God, sorry. Oh, one second. Give me one. I'm going to have to look this up because I cannot see the screen. Give me one second. So we're coming from Deuteronomy 7. And it says. You want me to read it? Uh, can you see it? Because I can't see it. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountain and springs, floating out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranate, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without Scarcity. Scarcity. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. In which you will lack nothing. Thank you. A land whose stones are iron and out of whom's hill you can be a copper. And ye shall eat and be full. And ye shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he have given you. Amen. So let's keep reading. So someone can read that for me. And here's what God is telling us about 
how do we show God that we're grateful? These are this is one thing that we how we can show God that we're grateful. Someone can read that slide for me. Uh take care least you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statuses. Is that statues or statuses? Statues. Statues. Okay. Which I command you today, least when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them. And when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied. Now, listen, so I I have something um, underlined by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes. This is one way that we show God that we're not grateful. By not keeping his rules and not paying attention to the the things that he has for us, not being obedient. Um, It's like, I think about this and I think about being grateful to God requires obeying his commandments and his rules. When I thought about this, I, I, I put it in a picture of an example that let's say that someone had blessed me to live in a mansion. Tavina had a mansion. She let me live there. Um, I didn't have to pay no rent. I didn't ask for it. Everything in there is already paid for. The electric, the water, cable, everything is all set for me. By showing gratefulness, I can say thank you all day long. By showing gratefulness, I'm going to honor her rules. I'm going to honor her her um her statues when it her commandments when it comes to living in the home. Um out of respect, I would do that. So that's one thing I would do. Not only would I do that, if she asks me for do to do something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to return the favor because what she's done for me was so much. I want to make sure she know I would do the same for her. And then not only that, for my gratefulness, what I would do is I'm going to tell everybody what Tavina did. I'm going to tell everybody about how good she was, how giving she was, how forgiving she was. That is exactly how God wants us to be when it comes to him. We, he wants us to, to obey him, to show gratefulness. He wants us to do the things he wants he has for us to do. Return the favor. If he do something for us, we do for him. And then also acknowledge him and give him praise and tell everybody about his goodness. That is one way to show God that we are grateful. Do we have any questions, any, any comments right now? Okay. If not, I'm going to move on. So I'm going to keep reading. So the last your herds and fox multiply and your silver and gold multiply and all that you have you know it was funny when i was reading the this 12th verse where it says this is so us we have to be so careful where it says lest you have eaten and are full not dissatisfied but full this is what god does for us that means we got a little bit more than what we really need and have built good houses that we all living in some good houses right now and live in them. And then, and when your herds of flocks are multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied. Now, I, I know, Savina, I've seen you on Facebook and I have too. I've been looking up ways for financial wealth. And so what has God continues to bless us with things and stuff that we can bless others, we have to keep these things in mind. So it says, and flocks... Flocks multiply your silver and your gold. That means your bank account, your stocks and bonds, all your retirement plan, all those things is multiplied. And all that you have is multiplied. And then it says, I'm gonna have someone start reading this. Somebody can read this for me. <clears throat> then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord, your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, 
that he might humble you and test you. I can't read that last word. Do good in the end. Yes. Thank you. No problem. So in the beginning where I have underlined, then your heart will listen. When God blesses us with all these good things, the great things, we have to be careful that our heart don't be lifted up. The Another translation said proud. That we will get proud when God does this, to, uh, gives us all these blessings and, and, and blesses it in, us in many, many ways. The Bible talks about a proud heart ex exalts itself. When you're proud, you're thinking about yourself and you're not thinking about God. So we have to make sure we're going to go on. Somebody can read that for me. Beware lest you say in your heart, my power and might of my hand has guiding me this wealth. Ye shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who give you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. So what we do, we start to take credit for ourselves when God starts to bless us. This is another reason why we don't give God thanks and we are grateful because we start looking at what we are what we're capable, what, what we've done and our abilities. A proud heart can be the result from the blessings that God has given us because we start to take the credit. And when you start to take the credit from God, we have to be really careful because then you start, when you start to take the bless, the, the, the thankfulness off the blessing and forget the bless sore, there's an issue. There's a problem with that. We forget from whom our blessings come from. So there's one last thing when I think about this, when it comes to God blessing us with certain things, we do, there are times that we really are grateful. We are grateful for the thing that God has given us. We are grateful for the people that God has put in our lives. And we show it. We show appreciation for that thing. We take care of that thing. We nurture that thing. Same thing with people. We love the people. We 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 are there for the people. We do all the things for the people that we that needs to be done. The problem is for that is, but we forget God who gives us the blessing. Now I'm going to go on to this next verse, <clears throat> and I'll read. Um, I can't, still can't see it. And this is verse 19. And if you forget the Lord your God. And go after other gods and serve them and worship them. I solemnly swear, warn you today that you shall surely perish like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you. So shall you perish because you would not obey the voice of the Lord. Sometimes when we are so nurturing the thing and we forget the blessing, showing gratitude for the blessing and not the blesser is a form of idolatry. When we start to focus more on the thing and love the thing and worship the thing and praise the thing and not give it to God, we are stepping in the side of idolatry. Idolatry simply means to worship something or someone other than God. And we have to be very careful even if the blessings come from God, that we acknowledge God in the midst of the blessings. There should be no God. The Bible says there should no should, there should be no other God before me. And God is a jealous God. He doesn't like us to put anything before him. Any, any, any questions right here? Because I'm just about done. Any comments? I, I was just thinking about, <clears throat> you know, where you said that when you start worshiping that blessing and it becomes like in a form of idolatry and um, how I've known some people, um, including myself at certain points, where you pray pray to God and pray to God for uh, provision for something, let it, let's say like a job, um, like you need a job, you're praying for a job and praying for a job and then you get that job and then suddenly you start 
becoming that workaholic Mm -hmm. and you're pouring and pouring and pouring. And then suddenly you're not remembering to thank God for it. And, and you, you know, you can't get to, to, to worship in him because you got to spend so much time doing work, whether you're Mm -hmm. at work or you're at home and you just pour everything into the job instead of the one who gave you the job. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's a very good example. Yes, it's Barbara. Uh, so the Thomas, First Lady Thomas. Um, I know God give good gifts and blessings, but you get a car, and um, you cannot afford the car. No, mm-hmm. you know down time. Mm-hmm. Now was it a gift from God, or did God bless us with that car? Or we just did, you know, seen a car in that and we just wanted it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Pastor Thomas, we were just talking about this not too long ago. I'm going to let Pastor Thomas answer that. We were. We, we absolutely were. We were talking about it. We were talking about it, not using that example directly, but people tend to get caught up in the back and forth of you know, uh, which, which which came first, the chicken or the egg, uh, you know, stuff like that. At the end of the day, it comes down to understanding and hearing clearly what God is saying to you. And also, and this speaks directly to what First Lady is talking about and the example that, that, that Sister Mel gave. Um, if God has the vision and, and gave the foresight to provide it for you, then he'll make provision for one to keep the blessing that he has for them, provided that to the best of their ability, they they keep things in proper perspective. And that's where so many times, you know, the principle of sowing and reaping comes back and, and kind of bites in a negative fashion because when we stop sowing, you know, technically when we stop sowing, we can stop reaping. And what I mean by that is it's like, if you don't put gas in the car, you keep on driving that car, eventually what's going to happen? You're going to run out of gas. Can something like that happen if the Lord has blessed you with the vehicle and you, you, you're you thankful for it, but you're not grateful for it. You're not appreciating it. You're not doing what you need to do to take care of it. You're not doing what you're doing to, to make provision for it. You know, God may allow circumstances and situations to happen where self will get in the way. And start making decisions that are contrary to God's word. And before you know it, you made decisions right out of your blessing. Because the principle of sowing and reaping works positively and negatively. It's not to say that we're the ultimately the ultimately determining factor of what God blesses us with or what he doesn't bless us with. But we have a direct say in how long we keep that blessing or if God has to take that blessing away in order to ultimately bless us with something better once we get it. And the challenge becomes, you know, not being grateful. The challenge becomes not having the gratitude and the foresight to say, God, I appreciate what you've given me. I appreciate the fact that you blessed me with this because you blessed me with this car. It's a nice car. You know, I forgive me for forgetting that I was walking a year ago or that I was in a hoopty a year ago. You know, we get to a plateau, like the scripture said, we get to a plateau, we'll get so caught up with being full and get so fat and sassy being full that we'll start sassing God. And everybody here that got kids know when your kids start sassing you, you may let them get by for a minute, but eventually what has to happen? They need to be what? Put back in their place. You know, and it's not to hurt them, but it's ultimately to help them. So to answer your question, it's not that God doesn't want the person to have it. And it may not necessarily be that it was not meant for them to have to begin with. It could be that a situation arose where the circumstances that made it good for them to be blessed with it, they might have changed because the individual might have stopped being grateful for what it was that they had. First lady said something earlier But before I go into it, did that answer your question, Sister Barbara? Let me stop there. Yes. Okay. First lady said something, uh, has said so much, something early that that 
really registered with me when, you know, the question was asked, can one be thankful and not be grateful? And my, my response when, when the question was asked to me was absolutely, you can. And it's kind of like the thank yous are hollow when there's no gratefulness, you know, and I remember the song, you know, be grateful. You know, I, I remember the song, be grateful, and we got to be grateful. I remember the song, Give Thanks. Give Thanks tells you, give thanks with what? With a grateful heart. Give thanks with a sense of appreciation for what God has done. And when we don't have that appreciation, when there's no sense of appreciation behind the things that God has given us that we're supposed to appreciate, like life, like health, like strength, like the gifts and talents that we have, it rings hollow. It rings hollow to God, just like people that are dogging out a car that you gave them, or people that are trash in a house that you bless them with or people that are dogging out an article of clothing or an expensive pair of shoes you gave them man i sure thank you for these shoes man I, I really thank you for them i really appreciate them what if you appreciate them why are you walking on the back of them you know why, why are you walking in mud in them you know our actions have to line up with our words otherwise it comes across as hollow thanks and god does god's not looking for hollow thanks but he's looking for grateful hearts to give him true thanks yeah, thank you for that, Pastor Thomas. Um, and that is so. That is so true, Pastor Thomas, because I used to give my grandson clothing that was too little for him to hit to his cousin, and I goes over to the house. They on the basement floor. So, was they thankful? But they just weren't grateful for one. Right. Right. Oh, okay. Being thankful is is I'm painting with a very broad brush. Being thankful is instantaneous. Being thankful is almost like a knee-jerk response. Mm -hmm. Please and thank you are the magic words. We're taught that from when we're little. You know, somebody gives you something, what do you say? Thank you. But gratefulness is making that thank you a long-term investment. You really appreciate it. I'm gonna show you how much I appreciate it by caring for it, you know? So yeah, that that's it. That's it. So since you said that, Pastor Thomas, I'm going to ask this question. This is something I didn't plan on asking. And actually, that's fortunate. That's all I have from Bible study, but I think this will bring up some, some discussion. You said, and I, and I believe thankful because it's just so automatic. It's a knee jerk reaction is something that we taught. Do you think that you need we need to be taught to be grateful? Is this something that's automatic? Do you need to practice to be thank to be grateful? That's a question I'm asking to the class. That's an excellent uh, question. I, I think, think it, go ahead, Sister Barbara. <laughs> I think that it should be taught because, like you said, thankful is automatically. But if you're not taught to be grateful, we would never be grateful if we're not taught to be grateful. And as children, just like you say, when you give them gifts around Christmas time or their birthday, they may be thankful for it. But when they open it up, they're not grateful because it's not what they was expecting. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I agree with that. I, I would I would say yes, it needs to be taught. I, yes, it needs to be taught from the standpoint of bringing the individual to the point of understanding. And, and here's what I mean. Um, it needs to be taught. And I think the way that it needs to be taught practically is to answer the question why. For the individual and just for my example i just want to use uh the example of the clothes sister barbara that, that you shared you know if for the sake of discussion the, the the cousin you know who said thank you says thank you that's a great thing you know if the dialogue had been and maybe it was and if i'm just assuming it's not so if i'm wrong please forgive me if the dialogue had been well you know sweetheart you're welcome let me explain to you why i wanted to give these to you and as you explain to them why you wanted to give it to them, that 
will help them see the value that the item has, you know, in relation to the person giving it to them, but more importantly, the value that they have in the life of the person that gave it to them. And you keep doing that enough times, eventually the light bulb will go on, wait a minute. Man, they really must care about me. Yes, the gift, I appreciate the gift, but it's more so about the individual that gave the gift and the fact that they think enough of me to provide me with these nice clothes or with this nice shoes or with this nice car or whatever it is. And they decide to make the investment. Well, in exchange for what they've given to me, what I want to give them is, you know, the peace in knowing that I understand, I get it now. And basically what that is, is from the standpoint of, and I think someone mentioned it earlier, First Lady, it might have been you. In essence, that's what witnessing is all about. Witnessing is, you know, you need to give Jesus thanks. And here's why you give him thanks. And we do that in the hopes that, you know, the atmosphere is made conducive for the, for, for the Lord to be able to move, bring about salvation as salvation happens and it becomes a personal relationship, that's when a little light bulb comes on and, re and people realize, man, man, he he died for me. And so, yeah, I'm going to take every day and take this life that he gave me and maximize it for him because he didn't have to do what he did. That's the process. So, yeah, it, it needs to be taught. And the teaching is designed to bring the person across the gap between, you know, where they are. And where God desires them to be. And once they understand the value that they have to the person that's given them what they're giving them, the gratefulness will come naturally because it's really the next step. That's good. That's good. I, I, I'm, I think about you know, what you was, we were talking about it and we were more looking at it from maybe an immature way, a child or someone that's new. But when it comes to mature Christians, people that's walked with the Lord for a while, know God's goodness, know his word, know who he is, know where all blessings from, gratefulness then should be automatic. It should just be automatic. It shouldn't be something that um, we have to practice. Mm -hmm. We should know that when God blesses us, we need to show appreciation to him. We need to show him by doing the by his doing his commandments, his statutes, his rules, by telling other people about him. It should be to a point of maturity in your gratitude and your attitude that it is automatic at some point. May I, may I and again forgive me, I'm I'm on no no, go ahead. That really speaks, in in my opinion, to the first, either the first or second scripture that you pulled, I think it might have been the second scripture where I, I made the reference of, you know, the individuals, I think it was the second scripture. They got so fat and sassy that they decided to start sassing God back with their actions as well as their word. That's because they were so full. Yeah. And I, I this is solely my opinion. I believe that many times more seasoned saints will get, and that's one of the telltale signs of religion creeping in and relationships kind of sneaking out. They'll get so fat and sassy and so full of the knowledge that they have, so full of the position that they have in the church, so full of whatever it is that they get full of that they stop being hungry and they stop maintaining the proper perspective. You know, and I, I go back to the song, Be Grateful. And I, I, for me, that helps keep me centered because when I'm getting to the point of starting to be in judgmental and stuff, I think about what that song is, be grateful because there's someone else that's worse off than you. And if we remember that where we are, we are where we are by nothing more or less than God's grace. Because at any point in time, we could take a wrong step and it could be over if it's left to us. But because when we take that wrong step, God's hand is right there to catch me and, and put me back or catch us and put us back. That is what we have to remember. And, and when, when we start getting so full of ourselves, we need to go, you know, sometimes we have to, you know, ask God to, to, you know, put us on a, a, a put us on a, a, a spiritual fast, put us on a, a fast so that this pride can be quelled back down. 
You know, help me see me, God, as you see me. Because when we start getting fat and sassy and we pray that prayer, we ain't going to like what we see if we truly mean that prayer because God is going to give us just what we ask for. He's going to show us ourselves as he sees us. And he sees us in those instances as being out of shape spiritually. He sees us in those instances as being ungrateful. Uh, he sees us in those instances um, as being somebody that if left unchecked by us long enough, a stumbling block and a hindrance to other people coming to know God. Mm. Because that's when you start seeing people potentially acting in ways that are contrary to what the word says. You know, those are folks that we've all heard people say it. We may have all been guilty of saying it at some point in time, some of the effect of they act this way on Sunday or this way in worship. But when I see them out in the community, that's a whole nother person. You know, but you can't question or challenge me because thus and so. That's not what it's all about. At no point in time did Jesus walk in pride. He walked in humility. He understood his place and he understood his role. And as we understood our, as we understand our place and understand our role of what God has us here for and understand the purpose that he has us here for, we should be grateful every day that in spite of the people that we have been in spite of the people that we are and the struggles that we have. God, you chose to breathe breath into my body and to give me life to use me today. Mm -hmm. Knowing how I acted yesterday. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm grateful. And I want to take today if for nothing else to make up for where I missed it yesterday because I appreciate what you've given me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God has to um, spiritually ground us take something away from us temporarily to help put us back in the proper perspective of who he is in our lives to really reawaken that gratefulness in, in other people. That's just my feeling. So first lady Thomas, yes, Pastor Thomas, we can be thankful, you know, for activity of our limbs, food on our table, but sometimes we just take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Like God have to do it for us. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Instead of just being grateful and appreciate what he does for us. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, it's just like when you say thankful for the activities of our limbs. And I was thinking about that as an example because you know God is given us this body a temple that we're supposed to take care of. We we say, God, we thank you for eyes to see and ears to hear and getting up to move. But what are we doing mm -hmm. for our bodies taking care of it to show him that we are, are appreciative? Are we working? Are we exercising? Are we, you know, eating right? Those things all come into play. And just like you said, thank God for the food that we have on our table. Well, are we wasting the food, throwing it away? You know, people don't have it. Are we showing appreciation? So it's it's action. It's action behind it than yeah. just words. Yeah. The, 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 way, the, the way I bridge it to bring it back to the reality of, of the walk dynamic, the knee-jerk response of saying thank you is basically religious. We all say thank you religiously every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when you have a relationship with that individual, be it a parent, be it a spouse, be it a, a, a child or whatever it is, when there's a sense of loyalty to that individual and there's a sense of relationship, the thank you is automatic and the thank you is appreciated by the individual that receives it. But what they appreciate more is what the individual that's offering it is willing to give based on the relationship. And that's the work behind the words. Far too many people are functioning in this season religiously, just like religiously, the fourth Thursday of every November is set aside naturally to say Thanksgiving in the United States of America. But every day is a day of Thanksgiving because of the relationship we have with God through Jesus Christ. Because every day we wake up, we realize we could have been dead and gone. We should have been dead and gone. But because Jesus chose not to get off the cross, we're still here. 
when we realize that everything that we have is because of the efforts and activity of someone else that didn't have to do it, that's what makes the relationship real. And that's what prompts those of us that get it from a relationship standpoint to really strive to give God the very best of our service because it's not even about us. I could care less if anybody ever knows who my, what my name is because it's not even about me. I want everybody to know who Jesus is and know him by name because that means that lives are being changed. And that's what it's all about to be, in my, in my opinion, truly grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Thomas. Um, I see Mel put that gratitude is something that affects our minds and bodies and spirits. So true. Every area of our life, gratitude does affect it. Um, so I that that was my presentation for today. I just the last slide that I have is just kind of sums it up. And it says gratitude is shown by our attitude and our willingness to adapt and or change our ways that are pleasing to God and remembering to give him the praise for all things. So that is the end, Pastor Thomas. I'll put it in. I, oh, I wanted to say something before you ended. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. So I want to talk about um, quickly the importance of being grateful for the little things. I know a lot of times we are thankful for what we see, what we receive, but when it's not how we want it to, how we, mm -hmm. how I, how we thought it would be, we don't show the gratitude. So for instance, um, if I'm believing in God for a three bedroom home to get my kids out the hood and God bless me with a house and it's two bedrooms, one bathroom. Yes, I'm thankful for it, but I'm not grateful for it. And the Bible talks about um, be grateful over a few things and I make you rule over many. And a lot of times God be putting us in places to be grateful, to, mm -hmm. to meet us where we're at and to take us somewhere different. But we have to be grateful for what we have and where we are at that moment. And I know a lot of times, I mean, I serve a big God. My God on this, mm -hmm. my God got that. And then God is like, but here, I'm going to give you a little bit of, and I'm like, um, mm -hmm. but God, that ain't what I want. You know what I'm saying? I, I I know you bigger than this. And I have to, a lot of times, so this is so good to me. I have to, a lot of times, start showing more gratitude. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for it, but I'm like, but I know what type of God, I, I know how God can show up in my life. I know what God can do. And a lot of times, even my car, my car broke down. Um, I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't remember, um, the sister name that was speaking but yeah i had a car broke down and i'm like yeah god gonna bless me with the car i won't god gonna bless you my bmw and god was like mm -hmm. you go to gmc like here you go 2019 i'm like nah god gonna give me a 22 you know <laughs> so it's like take care of the things that i give you be grateful for where you have be grateful for where you have, what you have and then Mm -hmm. And then, and I, I'll be, I'll be wanting to go past it and then because I'm this is my daddy, this is God. Right. And I remember I lived in this house, and y'all, I'm not gonna lie, it was a very small house, like a, like a. It, I remind me of a trailer home, and I was thankful that we was there, that He gave us a house because it was a whole lot while we needed to move. I did not have any gratitude for the house. I couldn't stand that house, and God mm -hmm. was telling me, I'm not gonna bless you with this with your next house until you're grateful for where you at and so i just want to just share that that it's important that no matter where you at and what you have be grateful for the little things you have that i be one my whole i told y'all the, the seafood board sometimes i can't get my seafood board i gotta eat me some mild potatoes and <laughs> wings for dinner and so be grateful for the little things and show gratitude for that. And so thank you so much, First Lady, for having this and opening my eyes even more about being grateful and being thankful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. I, um, I, I'm going to just, it made me think about the scripture I read when we first started. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to be teaching next week as well. And the topic that I was going, I was thinking about, which to me, it just kind of, she just confirmed it, is that we can thank God for the blessings. It's easy to thank God for the good, 
But the Bible says in all, how do we thank God for the bad? How do we thank God when things are not going our way? How do how, how are we grateful to God for like that when things are not going our way? How do we show gratefulness in the midst of storms, in the midst of lack? How do we show that? And so, yeah, stay tuned for next week. Um, I guess that that's where we're going to go. But thank you for sharing, Tavina. Pastor Thomas. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Tavina, um, for sharing. Thank you, First Lady, for, for a wonderful, wonderful lesson. So much that we can take from this lesson and practically apply to our lives. And the thing that's so awesome about God's word, especially when we're dealing with things and matters of the heart, is that it can always, it hits each and every one of us differently. But the reason why it hits each and every one of us differently is that it it's meeting us. Living Witness Ministries is a church on the move dedicated to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through the preached and taught word, community activism and outreach, and practical ministry designed to meet needs, bless hearts, save souls, and change lives. You can sow into the ministry via our cash app at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. That's dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. Sow your seed into the good works and good ground of Living Witness Ministries today. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the life giving way. We pray that you were blessed by today's broadcast and would love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can contact us by email at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two, witness at gmail.com or by phone at area code 404-955-8846. Again, that's area code 404-955-8846. Until next time, we encourage you to continue to live your life as a living witness.